I would like to introduce today's speaker. Um, her name is Ria Sakar. It's our car. Sorry, I always say it this different way you do. Um, okay. <laughs> Ria is a geologist. She got her BS in geology at Rutgers University, and she is now working on her master's in geology also at Rutgers University. Uh, she has been working at the Rutgers Geology Museum for many years, first as an undergraduate work study, and now she is our graduate student tour guide and does lots and lots of these tours for many school children around New Jersey. Um, so please welcome Rhea and take it away. Thank you, Lauren. Um, so like Lauren just mentioned, my name is Rhea Sarkar and welcome to Ask a Geologist, Rocks and Minerals. Um, so we're going to dive right into this and let me just so a little bit about me. Like Lauren mentioned, I am a graduate student studying geology, but I focus on paleoceanography, which is a really long word, but it's basically the study of the ancient oceans. So I look at really old water and I have a fun fact about myself, favorite dinosaur, but I have both. So I'm sure you all know and have heard of Tyrannosaurus rex. Head and little arms. And my other favorite is Coelophysis, right there. Okay, so we're gonna talk about minerals first and then we'll talk about rock. So what are minerals anyway? Okay, so minerals, when you think of minerals, some of you might think of the vitamins that you might take. But those are not the minerals we're talking about. Okay, so minerals are actually solid substances made out of elements. When you hear the word element, you may or may not have heard of or have seen the periodic table of elements before, but I'm sure you've heard of some of these elements before, like hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen is carbon and Gold. Okay, I'm sure everybody likes and has heard of gold before. So these are just a few elements, and I'm sure you know a lot of other ones. But minerals are made out of elements, and rocks are made out of minerals. So here's another picture. So I'm sure now all of you are like, oh, I know a lot of these things, right? So a lot of these minerals look very familiar. So I'm sure we all like to eat cookies. Love to eat cookies. I also like to bake cookies. So you can think of minerals, right? Just like ingredients for our cookies, okay? So we have ingredients like sugar and flour and butter, right? And chocolate chips, if you wanna make chocolate chip cookies or all of these ingredients together, you get your cookie dough, you pop it into the oven and you have delicious cookies. So just like that, Minerals, like I mentioned, are made out of elements, but then you can combine elements. In nature, they are combined to actually form rocks. Now, hopefully our cookies won't be as hard as a rock. However, I do know somebody who would not care about cookies. That is Cookie Monster. Okay, he will eat anything related to a cookie. So what there are some requirements that actually make a mineral, a mineral. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through a few of these and give you some examples. So naturally occurring, that just means that it needs to be found in nature. Okay, there are uh, laboratories that can actually grow and make crystals and minerals, uh, but we're talking about some requirements for our minerals. And that first one is if you go outside, start digging in the ground, you will find some minerals. So it has to be made by the earth. The second one is that it has to be inorganic. Now, that's a really big word too, but that really just means that it ha can't be made by a living thing or by, through some kind of biological process. So for example, pearls. Pearls are not minerals because they are made from oysters, okay? And if you've heard of amber before, maybe you have seen the amber, that kind of golden, colored thing with like a bug stuck inside of it, right? Okay, so amber is also not a mineral because that comes from a tree, it's a sap, okay? So that's also not a mineral. And so it just gives you an idea of what inorganic means. Uh, the other thing is that 
Minerals have a set chemical composition. So I said they're made out of elements and they can ma be made out of many different ele elements. And so you can actually have a chemical formula for each different mineral. So each mineral will have its own chemical formula that will tell you exactly what kind of elements there are and also how many of each elements there are in your mineral. The other thing that I mentioned that minerals are solid, so they can't be liquid or a gas. So a solid, that means that actually ice or glaciers, so glacial ice is actually considered to be a mineral. Okay, so minerals do check off all of the things, requirements on this list. Okay, mineral uh, ice is naturally occurring. It's in nature. It's not made by an organism. Uh, it has a chemical composition and it has also a crystal structure, which we'll talk about right now. Okay, so crystal structure, you can see in this picture right here, each mineral has a distinct shape too. So some of them might look like a cube and this internal crystal structure just means that the elements are fixed into different shapes, okay? They're fixed inside in different patterns. And so you can see here fluorite, okay, that has a cubic shape. Uh, if you've heard of pyrite, I unfortunately cannot find my pyrite sample uh, at home today, but they look, they also look like they're cubes, okay? And we have all of these other minerals and you can see in the diagrams here, some of them look like rectangles, right? And that's just how the elements are arranged inside of, uh, arranged inside, that's your structure. So I can show you also over here, I have, this amethyst. So if everyone can see this, you can see the crystals have a shape. Okay, so this one has like a little point at the end. It might be easier actually to look at this one. So that's the shape of amethyst crystal. Okay. And I also have here calcite. Okay. So if you look at calcite, it looks like a kind of slanted cube. So this one is calcite. And I'll be showing you more minerals and rocks uh, throughout our session today. Uh, but these are all the requirements for uh, what make, makes a mineral actually a mineral. And so there are some ways that we can identify minerals. Um, and so the first would be appearance. So like I just showed you, amethyst. Maybe many of you have seen this before, so you knew right away that was amethyst. Um, so by looking at sometimes there are minerals that look kind of bubs or they look really weird and you might have seen that before and you might remember what the name of that is. So just by describing what the minerals look like, okay? also like we just talked about shape and crystal structure, color is a really great one too. So color, so quartz comes in many different colors. And like I just showed you this one, amethyst it's actually just purple quartz so quartz can come as smoky quartz like a gray black color it can be citrine which is orange it can come in a whole range of colors as well as there are other minerals also that come in distinct colors uh, sulfur for example is yellow and you would definitely know uh, i'll tell you another thing about sulfur in a little bit but that's another way you could tell uh, what kind of minerals you have. So hardness is actually just the ability for a material to scratch, scratch your mineral. Okay, so there's a hardness scale. It's called the Mohs hardness scale. So it's the scale of one to 10. So one is the softest and 10 is the hardest. And as you can see, diamond, fortunately, I don't have any diamonds to show you, but Diamond is the hardest mineral in the whole world. And I'll tell you about that, why it's so hard in a little bit too. So talc, actually, maybe you haven't heard of just the word talc before. I'm sure we've all played and used, uh, played with and used baby powder before. Baby powder is made out of talc. Uh, there are also other things made out of talc, like makeup, okay, so like your powders. Okay, so this also has talc. Talc is used in a whole bunch of things that you wouldn't even think of, but talc is the softest. You can just crush it into a powder and 
that's baby powder. They call it talcum powder in some places. Your fingernail is actually a hardness of about 2.5. I think my fingernails are even softer than that because they break so easily. Um, and quartz, if you can see, is pretty hard too. It has a hardness of about seven on the scale. And if you like go, if you're like me and you like going to the beach in the summertime, I'm sure you've all played in the sand before and make sand castles. So that sand actually is made out of quartz. Okay, so if you actually look at the sand under a microscope, you would see really teeny tiny quartz crystals. And so basically you have rocks that will actually break down and break down as much as they can and eventually they'll turn into sand. And quartz is resistant, so that's why we have uh, sand, quartz sand beaches. And you can also take sand and if you melt it, you will get glass. So I will talk more about uses of minerals in a little bit, but let's get to other ways we can identify our minerals. So streak, there's a streak test. If you take a ceramic plate and you take your mineral and you just scratch it right across, it will leave behind a powder and it's going to be in a color. So you could identify your minerals that way. There are also luster. So if you look at this here, it's a little hard to see in the camera, but you can see the minerals in here are kind of sparkly or shiny. So luster is explained, it's how the uh, light actually reflects a mineral or a rock. And so you could say that, you know, this mineral looks kind of dull, or I think this one looks kind of pearly, or this one looks a little shiny. And there are some other special properties of minerals. So some minerals are actually magnetic. So that's really cool. And back to sulfur, other than being bright yellow, sulfur also has a smell. It smells horrible. Okay? It smells like rotten eggs. Okay, so sulfur smells really bad, but you would be able to tell that is sulfur for sure. And the other really cool thing is in New Jersey, we have a town named Franklin uh, in Northwestern New Jersey, and they have a lot of fluorescent minerals and rocks. So you would just look at this rock, it might look like a gray, old, boring rock maybe, but under a special UV light, some of the crystals or some of the minerals in that rock will actually glow in the dark. So they have that really cool ability to do that. And you can see right there. You see how that fluoresces. So here's regular light and then you have special ultraviolet light. Okay, so now we're on to rocks. So there are three different types of rocks. Uh, the first one, if you see up top here, that is an igneous rock. The second would be a metamorphic rock. And then we have sedimentary rock. So we'll talk about how these are formed. And here's a, and a reminder. We're not talking about rock music. Okay? So this would be the other three types of rock. but not the kind of rock we're talking about today. So how do rocks form? Well, talk about igneous rocks first, and they are formed like this. I'm just kidding. They're not actually formed by Squidward, but they are formed from a volcano. So igneous rocks come from a volcano, and when you have molten rock, that is called magma. So inside of the volcano, when it's underground, it's called magma. And when it is above ground, that is called lava. So here's an image of that lava. Okay, this is sped up, okay, but sometimes lava could actually be really, really fast. But for this image, it's a little faster. Um, and so igneous rocks, like I mentioned, there are different types. So I have an igneous rock here you might be familiar with. Right here, okay. So many of you may have countertops that are made out of granite. You've heard of that before. 
So here's the polished side, and here's the unpolished side. So here we have granite, that is an igneous rock. Basalt, like I just showed you in the previous picture, uh, the ocean seafloor, right? The oceanic crust is made out of basalt. A lot of volcanic islands are made up of basalt. Okay, and the other rock we're gonna talk about is a sedimentary rock. Oh, so like I mentioned before about sand, right? You have these rocks that have formed from it either an igneous rock, right? And it'll break down, right? Nature will break into small pieces or small sediments. Those are going to then get buried into layers and layers and layers and layers. And they're just gonna keep accumulating, like you can see in this image here, and over time. And so it takes millions of years to form these rocks. It's not like an instant snap of a finger thing where you have a rock formed. It takes a really long time to form these rocks. And so over a lot of time, you will have the sediments are actually going to press on each other and compact into a rock. So that's why fossils are only found in sedimentary rocks, because the way that fossils are formed um, is in this way where they are buried by other sediments and other uh, pieces that are going to layer and accumulate and then compact into a rock. The third kind we have is a metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rocks are made under intense heat. So if you're unsure about what uh, intense pressure means, if you rub your hands together and you press really, really hard, you'll feel that your hands are warming up because so you're putting pressure by pressing them together. And when you're rubbing so fast, you have all of that heat. So that's what I mean by a lot of pressure. You have mountains, right? So metamorphic rocks are found in mountain ranges. There's a lot of pressure there, a lot of heat. Also in subduction zones and in other high temperature and high pressure places where the rocks are actually going to heat up a lot and the minerals will also change. Okay, the minerals can change in metamorphic rocks. And this one here, this mineral, this is garnet. Okay, so garnet is made in really, really high pressures and temperatures. And that is in a metamorphic rock. And they can be really, really big. I've seen like garnets that are this huge, or they could be small. And it depends on how much temperature and pressure that you actually have. Uh, that your rock actually formed under. Okay, so the rock cycle, right? There is a cycle here. It's showing you metamorphic rocks, sedimentary rocks, and igneous rocks. So like I mentioned, igneous rocks are first formed from a volcano. They can then break down into small sediments and layer up and turn into sedimentary rocks. And you can take sedimentary rocks and it can be under a lot of heat and it can turn into a metamorphic rock. And the cycle is very, very complicated, but this is a simplified diagram. Um, but there are different interactions that can happen. But like I said, that magma is just molten rock. So if you took a metamorphic rock or you took a sedimentary rock or something else, they could be melted and that would be magma. Um, and you could take an igneous rock or you could take a sedimentary rock, put it under heat and pressure, and it can change into a metamorphic rock. So like I said, it's very, very complicated and it's pretty cool actually, um, what can actually happen. Why are we spending all this time talking about rock? Okay, so why do we care? Well, like I mentioned, rocks and minerals do make up a lot of things that we use every day. We don't even realize, okay? So right now that I showed you, Makeup, right? So makeup and other like nail polish, they have uh, talc. Here's the powder. So a lot of minerals are in here. You also, I hope if you brushed your teeth today, and I hope everybody did brush their teeth today, but you probably used toothpaste. Okay, so if you use toothpaste, you will see that it says fluoride toothpaste. So fluoride comes from a mineral called fluorite. Okay, so you're brushing your teeth with fluoride. 
Uh, you also have uh, many other uses like this one over here. I don't know if you guys know this one. This is a pumice stone. So you use this to actually uh, scrub your feet to make it nice and soft. Okay, and so this pumice is also another type of volcanic rock, an igneous rock. And that forms when really, really quickly, you can see all its little holes in this or the vesicles. Okay, it's vesicular. And that forms quickly outside of the volcano. It's kind of like a carbonated drink, right? When you drink soda, it's like bubbling up. So all of that froth will actually then quickly cool down into a rock, and that's pumice. Um, and I also have here, it's really big, Himalayan salt rock, okay? So salt comes from a mineral as well, that's called halite. Okay, so your table salt is processed, it's extracted, and it's processed so that we can use it in our cooking, in our food, and over here, I also have glass, okay? So I mentioned that sand, if you actually melt it down, you can form glass. And this is one of the other uses. Now I wanted to also show you this pencil. You might be wondering why I'm showing you a pencil, but the lead in your pencil is made out of graphite. Okay, so graphite is also another kind of mineral. Okay, and graphite is actually made out of the same element as a diamond, and that is carbon. So they both are pure carbon, but remember, diamond is the hardest mineral in the world. It's a 10. Uh, remember, it's a scale of 10 on that Mohs hardness scale. And graphite is pretty soft because, I mean, I'm using it to write on paper, right? So it's breaking pretty easily. And even though they both are made out of carbon, the difference is going back to that crystal structure I was telling you all about. The carbon inside of diamond, so diamonds are made under intense heat and pressure. Okay, so diamonds are actually, that um, carbon is interconnected. So that's really, really strong. So it's very hard to break that bond. Only a diamond can cut another diamond or scratch. Uh, a lot of machines use drills that have a diamond at the tip so they can cut through rocks easily. And graphite does not have that strength. It's very weak because the carbon inside graphite, it's not interconnected like I was mentioning. Okay? And so some other uses of minerals, well, sometimes uh, the roofs are made out of slate. Uh, the shingles on your roof are made out of slate. Um, you have, if you have a cat, cat litter is made out of zeolite minerals, okay? Uh, that's also found in detergent. So if you do your laundry, your detergent also has minerals in it. So there are a whole bunch of things I could go on and on and tell you all day about all the different uses of minerals, but they're also very valuable, okay? So uh, gold, silver, uh, and aluminum, right, copper. So these are all extracted from the earth and mined. These are very valuable. And I think they're really cool too. Okay, so they're cool. Everywhere. So there are actually over 4,000 minerals in the world. Minerals are found all over the, all over the world. Really cool. So if you guys have questions, uh, you did send in out of time and I see this uh, question answered. This chat here has a lot of questions too, so I will now answer. Okay, so let's see. Grace from Hillsborough, New Jersey has asked, how come some rocks have beautiful gems on the inside, but ugly, bumpy outside? So that's a great question. Okay, so 
If you're not familiar with what great what Grace is talking about, these are called geodes. Okay, and so basically, like I mentioned, that magma, uh, that molten rock, actually bubbles. Okay, so that when the bubble actually cools down and solidifies, so that part is the outside of your, that's your ugly bumpy part, and on the inside, the rest of the magma can crystallize and. Um, turn into beautiful gems that we can then use to cut and we can polish and we can use them for jewelry, right? So a lot of the gemstones and uh, are found in bracelets or, you know, pretty earrings or necklaces like that. I hope that answers your question. The next one is Clementine from Sparta, New Jersey. Uh, and also from the Tachin, want to know what are rocks and minerals made out of? Well, I hope you were able to catch the first part where I mentioned that minerals are made out of elements and rocks are made out of different minerals. Okay, Hannah from New Brunswick has asked me, what is your favorite geology pun? Well, I would have to dig something up, but actually I do know another pun and that is why did the geologist lose uh, why is this geologist, well, why wasn't he hungry? And the answer to that is he lost his appetite. If you're not familiar with appetite, appetite is just uh, another type of mineral. So there's the pun in there. I really like that one. Miriam from Cranford. When people came to Earth, were rocks already there? Well, the Earth is, the Earth is made out of rocks, right? And I'm sure uh, our future sessions will go over the formation of the Earth. And also, uh, people actually evolved on Earth, so they didn't come to Earth, but there's actually another, I think the third session, we'll talk about human evolution, so definitely uh, come back and watch that. Lucas has asked, where do crystals form? Okay, so like we were talking about those igneous rocks and when that magma actually cools down, crystallizes and, and it crystallizes at different temperatures. So different crystals will come out at different temperatures. Okay, Philip from Jersey City, New Jersey, asked, are diamonds really the hardest mineral in the world? And yes, they really are the hardest mineral in the world. And for that reason that I just explained about the carbon, uh, how it's interconnected makes it very strong. Leela from Southampton, New Jersey, where do the sparkles that you see on some rocks come from? Okay, well, if you remember, I was talking about the luster. Okay, so that's how the light is reflecting off of a surface. Okay, so sometimes um, you, have, you shine a light on your little crystal and it'll be really sparkly. Leela from Clifton, what is your favorite type of rock? That's a very good question. I feel like I get this, this question so many times and I really have a favorite, but I think I would probably say pillow basalt because it has the word pillow and really answer, but I think all right. figured out what my favorite is yet. Okay, I have a really good question from Perry from Southampton. What makes minerals different colors? Okay, so um, like I said, that minerals are made out of different elements are organized into a, a crystal shape or a crystal structure inside. So sometimes you have um, an impurity, so you have another element. That's how you get different colors. And so quartz comes in so many different colors. The chemical formula is the same, uh, same thing, but then you'll, you'll see there's a added element in there and that's what gives it the different color. Jacob from Clarksburg, New Jersey. What is the coolest thing you have done as a geologist? Oh, that's a really great question. I guess the coolest thing I did was when I actually had to go. To Idaho. Oh, I had to go out to Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming, where I was hiking and camping for six weeks, and I got to go to a lot of the really cool national parks and. Maps. And the coolest thing I did there would have to be that I went to Yellowstone and I saw the hot springs. So that was really awesome. 
And I also, uh, in our free time, I got to actually go into a lava tube. So that was something I've never done before. So that was a very interesting experience. So I'm going to answer some of the questions you guys are asking today now. Do you have a favorite trilobite? I, good question, but I think trilobites are very cool. Okay, so Grace and Ava. Hey, Grace, age eight years old. What kind of minerals can be found in the rocks here in New Jersey? That's a very good question. So I mentioned the fluorescent minerals. You can find those are actually... Franklin, New Jersey is the fluorescent mineral capital of the entire world. So those are only found in New Jersey. So that's really awesome. What are the other minerals like quartz? Um, really a lot of them are very, very common in New Jersey. So that's a great question. So here's another one. We watched a video in which they discussed getting oxygen from moon rocks. How does that work? Very cool question, and Rose is actually going to be presenting. Is she could probably answer that? You'll have to wait for her to talk. Uh, wait for her talk. To okay. Next question is why are there rocks all over the Earth? I am eight. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for telling me how old you are. Um, so, well, so like I said, the earth is made out of rock, right? So, get too much into how the earth is made because it is made out of it, so you find it all over the place. We have people who study rocks, and what will we learn that is useful from studying rocks? That okay, so people study rocks. Uh, because they tell you about the Earth's past. Not even just the Earth's past, but also about the present and also the future. Um, so if you study volcanic rocks, then you learn a lot about volcanoes. And, you know, people in, on Earth do deal with volcanoes, right? So, you know, studying metamorphic rocks, too, can also tell you about mountain buildings or different geologic settings or different environments. Uh, and well, if somebody who studies sedimentary rocks, well, they're studying fossils. So I have a fossil here. And if you're studying fossils, you want to learn about uh, the past or you want to learn about some specific uh, creature like dinosaurs, or if you want to learn about, uh, you know, some other ancient creature, it's kind of hard to see, but this is sedimentary rock called shale and there's Actually, these are called brachiopods. It's kind of hard to see it though. But rocks have a lot of important information. You can even crush, you can crush the rocks and look at the chemistry. And that can also tell you um, even about the climate. So we can also study climate from rocks. How do we know if rocks have crystals inside of them? So going back to that first question about the ugly, bumpy rocks and how why they have really pretty gems inside. So the, that is a geode, and the way you can tell actually is it's hollow on the inside, so it's actually going to feel lighter than other rocks. So that would be one way. And also the other way would be to just crack it open, and then you have really pretty um, crystals inside. Would diamond qualify as a metamorphic rock? Well, diamond is a metamorphic mineral because it forms under... A lot of heat and pressure and it forms also in independently of igneous rock where it is found so it's actually a type of uh, xenocrist okay so that's diamond okay let's see if we have some more questions oh we have a lot more okay so why do things like mica and graphite form thin sheets rather than crystal stru structures like other minerals yeah, well, microcrystals are formed in distinct layers, and they are actually known as sheet silicates. So minerals, like I said, there's so many different kinds, but they are actually grouped into um, different categories and based off of a lot of characteristics that we were talking about today, as well as others. And so this actually will 
help the manufacturing cycle of turning raw mica into mica sheets. Mica sheets can come in flexible and rigid grades, and this gives mica sheets a certain versatility when it comes to their many different uses. So why do we use rocks in so many daily things? Well, like I showed you, right? So they have so many different uses, right? So can you imagine if we didn't have uh, any of these rocks or minerals? Like what would we even use? We would have to find something else to use, right? It's a natural product that we can actually change and use. So your spoons and forks when you eat, those are made out of silver. And even your phones have like gold and they have other things in your uh, wires and you know there there's a lot of different uses for that right so it's something natural that we can extract or we can use and we can uh, change it into a product uh what makes minerals well uh if you were here for the beginning of our session today minerals are made out of elements so uh different elements would be carbon or you know even oxygen sulfur silica uh these are different types of elements what is the most common mineral? That's a great question. So a lot of the common minerals are silica and also iron is also very common, uh, potassium. So I can't remember off the top of my head all of the very common ones, but uh, some of them would also be like quartz actually. So that would be in silica, those quartz. And uh, I would say, yeah, I'm blanking out right now, but uh, there are feldspar is another one actually. Um, feldspar is actually the most common mineral on Earth, and then quartz would actually be the second most common. Uh, so if you, this is true if you think of the entire Earth. So if you think of the crust, okay, and including the uh, oceanic crust, including the continental, feldspar and quartz would actually be the two most common ones. Okay, uh, Wyatt from Somerville wants to know what is copper. Okay, so copper is a, like I said, a solid substance. Okay, it is an element, and that is uh, in its pure form. So a penny, okay, a penny is made out of copper as well, and it is uh, extracted and mined. Okay, yes, pillow. So Leila is saying thanks for my comment about pillow basalt. Yeah, if you wanna learn about pillow basalt definitely look it up and i would suggest look up a video of how pillow basalt is formed it's very cool okay we have so many questions you guys are great okay so when okay so when rocks were in the lava why do they now have crystals well if you were following along before when uh magma when it's under the ground when it solidifies and cools down they actually form uh they crystallize so that's what happens they form different crystals uh why okay why did you become a paleoceanographic ge geologist sometimes i can't even say that word that is a great question well i actually when i was doing my undergrad at geology uh, in geology i was so fascinated and interested in everything in geology i wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted to specialize in. So I then started uh, working actually with Lauren and she works in, uh, she works on paleoceanography and I was working in the lab and I look at microfossils, which are really teeny tiny uh, shelled, uh, shells made from uh, microorganisms. And so the, those shells actually tell you a lot of information about past climates. Um, so studying the chemistry of the shells will tell you about past ocean temperatures as well as uh, chemistry of the ocean. And so you can kind of reconstruct past climates for different times. So I thought that you could use this application. You can apply it everywhere, anywhere in the world, and you can study so much in paleoceanography uh, for the past, present, as well as future. So that really appealed to me. I really liked that. And I also like working on a, in my lab on a microscope. So I look down the microscope and I get to look at really uh, cool uh, shells. You know, they, it looks like sand actually, but if you put it under the microscope, 
they have different shapes and I think that's really cool to look at and uh, so that's why I like uh, what I do. Okay, then getting a lot of thank you notes. Well, thank you all for watching. Okay, so please uh, tune in next Tuesday to hear Dr. Chris LaFree talk about Earth's magnetic field. I had a lot of fun today. You guys had a lot of great questions and I hope to uh, do this again in the future. So don't forget to tune in once again next Tuesday. Okay, so bye.